Hello everyone, I welcome you all to uh, today's session wherein we will be discussing uh, uh, one of the types of uh, data interpretation sets which are uh, pie charts basically. So, we will be looking at very basic concept following that we will be looking at the example also for more detailed learning right. Uh, please ensure that you get in touch with your uh, closest time center right and get enrolled for CAT uh, which is uh, the national leader as far as the number of uh, uh, converts into the final converts into IIMs is concerned right. Let us get started. So, when we talk about pie charts with respect to uh, data interpretation. So, here the representation of the data given to us, the information given to us is done in the form of circles. So, in the circle we will be using sectors to represent uh, the value of a particular variable as an example. If I want to talk about just a minute, if I want to talk about number of students in a school all right number of students in a school which consists of six different classes so let's say this is class 5 class 6 class 7 class 8 class 9 and class 10 so over here each of the variable is allocated as particular sector and just by looking at the size of the sector, we may comment about the size of the variable. For example, here one may notice that the class 7 has the smallest sector and hence we can conclude that class 7 must have had the least number of students. Similarly, if you look at class 9 perhaps, eh, this, this appears to be the largest, class 9, it has a largest area and thus we can conclude that class 9 uh, will have maximum number of students. So, that means one thing that we need to understand here in the pie charts case is, the variable is represented using the sector. There could be one pie chart or two pie charts, there could be more number of pie charts also, right? But variable is represented using the sector. One more thing that we need to understand is how is the value of the variable given? The value of the variable, for example, here these sectors, the values can be given in three different ways. One of the ways is absolute value given. For example, I can directly say that in class 5, there are 27 students class 6 there are 33 students etc that is one way second way in which the values can be given is in terms of percentages for example instead of giving exact value i may say class 6 had 16 2 by 3 percentage of the total strength so that there is a indication uh, that we get uh, from this number with respect to size of the class 6 or the value could also be given in terms of degree okay it can be given in degrees also for example i'll say class 7 that we have right now here is 18 degree okay so this way values can be given in three different ways in a pie charts case all right generally and mostly most commonly this is used percentage values are most common follow following that is a degree all right and uh, almost rarely you will get absolute values that's never given right so we'll be dealing with these two only majorly so, thus if you have these two values given, sometimes there would be a requirement of converting one type of value to the other, for example, percentage to degree or degree to percentage. So, the conversion factor that we have is, if you wish to convert percentage into corresponding degree value, you simply multiply by 18 upon 5 and for the reverse conversion, you multiply by 5 upon 18. So, this is the conversion rule that we make use of in case of pie charts involving two different values. So, these are some basics about the pie charts that you should be aware of all right as uh, an aspirant as someone who is planning to take CAD this year uh, basics are ok. But one more thing that you should be uh, looking forward to is the application of the concepts that you learn, how well you read the data all right, how quickly you interpret comprehend the given question right all that will also be essential right. So, for doing that let us have a look at this particular set on pie chart. So, this says the pie chart gives information about the population in six different states A to F are the six states in the country of some Polka. 
So this is a pie chart that we have. Right? So if you look at the pie chart, uh, just to, so that you follow clearly, this is the value associated with A. You can see that there. This is the value associated with B, with C, with D, with E, and with F. And based on this data, which is very clear, all right. I hope it's very clear. The total population is also given: forty-five million. The question asked is find the percentage by which population of B is less than that of A. So the question is a basic percentage comparison question, right? One variable is compared with respect to the other, right? It's a basic uh, percentage comparison based question. But there is an important learning that I want to share with all of you here. The question, if you will see, it is asked in percentage terms. The question is asking you what percentage? Find the percentage, right? Whenever the question is in relative terms, now what do I mean by relative terms? Relative terms basically means the terms or units for which absolute value cannot be calculated. For example, percentage is one such relative term, or ratio, or degree. Example: If I say Arvind is twenty percent taller than Bharat. So, if Arvind is twenty percent taller than Bharat, how tall Arvind is as compared to Bharat? That cannot be answered because we only know the answer in terms of percentages. Similarly, ratio is one more relative quantity. If I say the ratio of boys and girls in the class is three to four, so boys is three parts, girls is four parts. That's okay, but we cannot comment about the exact number of boys or girls. That is also relative quantity. Whenever the question is asked in relative quantity. In all such cases, we can assume convenient values and solve the question. We can assume convenient values and solve the given question. For example, he is asking us B with respect to A. So what we'll do here is, in this pie chart, the total value given is forty-five million. I'll not get worried about forty-five million doll. I'll simply assume the total population to be hundred. If the total population is hundred, can I say the value of B is going to be fifteen percent means fifteen people, and A is going to be twenty percent means twenty people? Now the question translates to find the percentage by which fifteen is less than that of less than twenty. Find the percentage by which fifteen is less than twenty. How do we answer it? So my answer directly here will be fifteen is how much less than twenty? It's five. The comparison is happening with respect to twenty, not with respect to fifteen. And this fraction multiplied by hundred will give us the corresponding percentage value, which is one by four into hundred, which makes it twenty-five percent. Okay. So for this first question, the answer should be twenty-five percent, and the learning out of the first question could be this. So please make a note of this particular point. Tomorrow in the exam, right? If you see that the question is asked in relative terms. Don't bother about the absolute values given. I did not bother about the forty-five million given to us. All right. <clears throat> next, I'll just clean everything here. The next question. It reads. You can just read it once. It says, if the population of state C was over-reported by twenty-five percent, and the population of A was under-reported by nine point zero nine percent, if these mistakes are now rectified, then what percentage of the population of the country Polga lives in the state of C? So, by the way, C right now is ten percent. A right now is twenty percent of the total population of Polga, which is forty-five million. But again, please look at this question. Finally, is asking you what percentage. So that means, can I say even now the question is in relative terms? So whenever the question is in relative terms, we can make use of the point that we have discussed some time back. That relative terms, we can assume convenient values for solving. So I'll do the same thing here. So here, if I again assume the total population to be hundred, so the populations of A and C. Particularly, I am interested in A and C, but I'll just write down for others also. The total population is hundred. Reported population, so A is twenty percent. 
20 people, 15 people, 10 people, 15 people, 15 and this is 25. Okay, sum is 100. Now, what does it say? Population of C. So, I'll just change the ink once. This population has been over reported by 25 percent means what? So, if population of C was some let us say some x, let population actual population of C if it was x then the reported is over, over reporting huh? we are showing in excess then the reported value reported population of C will be how much? 25 percent more. So, it is going to be x plus 25 percent of x which is x plus x by 4 which is nothing but 5 by 4 x. So, the reported is 5 by 4 x which is given to be as 10. So, can I say if I put this as 5 by 4 x from this equation simply I will get the value of x as 8. So, that means the actual population of C was 8 people but the authorities here in C have over reported it right they have shown in excess over reported it by 25 percent. So, if you can just do the calculation 25 percent of 8 is 2. So, they have shown 2 more people right so, 8 is shown as 10 2 more people. So, we get the actual population of city C as 8 people right? fine. Next if we talk about the other city which is A let us talk about A but I will just clean this all. So, if I talk about A, again for A what is happening? Under reporting is happening. So, basically if the value is 100, now we are showing less for A. In case of C, it was more. In case of A, we are showing less under report. So, for A, if I take population of A, let actual population to be Y. If actual population of A is Y, so can I say reported population? of A will be there is an under reporting of 9.09 percent. Now, there is one more important detail that you should know 9.09 percent is nothing but 1 upon 11 in terms of fraction. So, that means I am reducing my value of y by 1 11. So, it is better since there is a denominator of 11 involved it is better we take this as 11 y not just y but 11 y right? it is better we take it this way. So, if you take 1 by 11th of this it will be simple y. So, we are reducing the value by y. So, reported value will be 11 y minus 1 by 11th of y which will give you 10 y. 11 y minus y is 10 y. 1 by 11th of 11 y sorry. Okay? So, that means this 10 y is nothing but equal to 20 reported. Hence, we will get the value of y as and if you get the value of y as 2, the actual population of A will be 22. So, that means if I clean this all everything, uh, you can just note it down, I am going to clean everything. Just remember x is 8 and the actual population of A is 22, just remember that. So, uh, so what do we get here? Let us check. So, these are the reported populations. So, the actual population will be A will be 22, B is unchanged, C will be 8, unchanged, unchanged, unchanged. When you add them all, you will still get it as 100 only. So, basically what has happened is the population of C has reduced by 2, A has increased by 2, they cancel out each other. The increase and decrease simply cancel out each other. So, the total is still remaining same. Now, look at the question. If these mistakes are rectified, we have done the rectification here. Then what percentage of the tot uh, what percentage of the population of the country Polga lives in state C? So, can I say my answer based on the data here is in state C we have 8 people out of 100 and 8 out of 100 is nothing but 8 percentage. So, the answer for this question is going to be 8 percent. All right. I hope we are clear with this. So, this was one example, one set based on a particular uh, data interpretation type right, which was uh, pie charts. I hope it was clear to all of you. Right? 
So on that note, all right, just keep practicing this, all right. We keep practicing DI because the more you practice, the better you will be with respect to its application, right, with respect to the interpretation of the data and all that, you will be getting better with it gradually. Keep doing that right? and uh, keep coming back uh, to this videos, all right, that we offer, all right. We will be releasing so many other videos on DI also, including other areas like quant and verbal, right. Uh, do subscribe, right, and uh, please uh, pay attention to the notifications that you would be getting from RN whenever a new video releases, all right. On that note, let me end the session here. Thank you and all the very best.